Hi everyone, this is Joel from Niami Zoo, and I have a little ferret friend today. This is Penny, and uh, Penny, you can see, has a very long, thin body. And very long, thin body animals like this have very special adaptations, and I would like to invite a couple of friends here real quick to help demonstrate that. Let me put her away for just a second. And if I could have two of uh, the trainers that actually work with our ambassador animals, uh, we have Jess. Jess, come on over. And then we have Laura right here. And uh, we're going to try and demonstrate a little bit about the, the flexibility of a ferret and being a major adaptation uh, so that they can survive in the wild. So we're going to use this uh, cool tube here for a second, but we got to modify this tube just a little bit. Can you guys pull that thing apart? Pull it. Oh, <laughs> use those muscles. Pull it harder. Oh, there we go. Very good. Okay, now, if you could make this look like the letter U. Good, good, good. And then if you guys could swap sides here and pull that down around my hand. Go down, down. Okay, gosh, these zookeepers are strong. Let me just tell you. Okay, so if we take this and we... Can you hold that with two hands right there? And would you hold that with two hands right there? Uh, and we are going to go get our ferret friend, and I'll be right back. So as we look at ferret flexibility. Uh, we see this tube right here, and sometimes kids might go into uh, different uh, playgrounds and, and kind of go through big versions of these tubes. Uh, but ferrets, they like going through tubes too. So uh, here's Penny, everybody say hi, Penny. Hi, hi Penny. Penny. Everybody say bye, Penny. Bye, Penny. And Penny's gonna crawl herself right down in there. She loves this little tube. Let's step a little bit closer here and see if she comes out that other end. Hmm, she could fall asleep in there, we don't know. She likes that tube a lot. Oh, oh look, oh. she came back out up the top here. Uh, but if we can see her there, uh, she'll probably turn back around and go back in. But here's what's amazing about that, is if uh, she is in the top of this tube, then she went down, folded herself mostly in half, and then turned right around and came right back up out the same hole. Well, there she goes down the hole again. So maybe she'll come out the front this time. Oh. Uh, but that's the thing, is that ferrets have to be so flexible oh. that if they're underground, oh, there she is. There she is. So you can see that she folded herself over herself again, went down through the tunnel, went through the loop-de-loop, -loop, and came out the front there. And that really demonstrates how flexible ferrets can be. Now, of course, these plastic tubes aren't underground, uh, but what we would see is that um, ferrets would actually uh, be in underground tunnels hunting other animals. So we might think of things like rabbits or like their wild cousin, the black-footed ferret, would be hunting things like prairie dogs. So she just came right back out the top here. So she likes moving back and forth. But you notice that every time she comes out of that tunnel, uh, she comes out face first. Right? And that's very important because if you were a tunneling animal and you went down in a tunnel but then came out backwards, you wouldn't know if a predator might be waiting for you at that exit. And so you got to come out face first so you can see what's going on. And as you can see, she demonstrates that back and forth. Uh, Penny, uh, she's very good at moving back and forth. Uh, now, when we think about her wild cousins, things like weasels or uh, even mink, but especially things like the black-footed ferret, um, they, of course, can uh, be impacted impacted by what humans are doing to their environment. Uh, things like the black-footed ferret, uh, that animal is highly endangered. In fact, it almost went completely extinct, reducing its numbers down to just 18 animals just over 30-some years ago. Uh, and now, of course, there is a release program to put them back in the wild. And it's important to protect not just the ferret, but also its food source, like prairie dogs and the places where prairie dogs live. And so when we think about these animals, uh, we have to protect not just the animal, but we have to protect the place where it lives and all the other animals too so that the animal has the best chance of survival. So remember folks, make sure that you're protecting uh, animals where you live and let's all work together to protect the ones in the wild and we'll keep doing our job at the zoo and thank you so much. We'll see you later.